Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we have arrived in the hotel here in North Carolina. You guys just saw how my trip began. That was with my Uber driver on the way from my house to the airport. Blew a flat at no fault of his own, which happens. I noticed it right away, so did he. Dashboard lit up, I'm in the back seat, like, I think we have a problem, he pulls over. Uh, jumped out with the quickness, checked it, he's like, yep, I got a flat, immediately went to his trunk, so he was prepared, had a spare, had the jack, had the wrench, had everything that was that was needed to change it out. I obviously gave him a hand, but dude was good to go on that, so an easy five-star review and a increased tip just for preparedness alone that's worth the the extra compensation interesting start to the trip airport uh today was quick was real quick getting through and then uh i arrived in raleigh grabbed my rental car and i had to bomb straight on to fort bragg for some business and then i just got to my hotel give you an idea of the setup you know, we talk about that mobility session that I typically do here in the room. Got a good enough area. Got this random, like, I don't know, oversized love seat, which is kind of a weird thing to have in this room. But enough of a space to lay down a towel and get some calisthenics, some yoga, some mobility work. Here, I had to move this ottoman out of the way. It's kind of a weird setup. It's a big-ass couch. But I want to give you guys an idea of kind of what the loadout looked like for this trip. It's a little bit of a longer trip. So I'm gone, was it seven days? Total, three states. All right, so it starts off here in North Carolina. And then from here, I fly to Vegas. I'm there just uh, one or two nights. And then from Vegas, I'm, I'm at Phoenix for another couple nights and then back home. So I had to bring a, a little extra loadout on this one. Uh, you know, again, just because of the duration of the trip and the amount of movement. So last trip that I shared with you guys, I went real light where I just brought that go bag and had everything I needed in that. A trip like this, I went a little heavy. So oh, let's just see if how my shit survived the flight. Oh, it looks like we're actually in pretty good shape. So I checked this bag. Um... So yeah, this trip, it's kind of, I got, I have to be prepared for a lot of different types of events on this trip. So I need my uniform uh, for the work I'm doing on Fort Bragg uh, tomorrow and Friday. And then I need obviously athletic clothes to train. I need casual clothes for some of the other engagements. And then I need more kind of formal-ish stuff. So anytime I need to bring like formal clothes. And formal for me is kind of a strong word. Certainly if I'm bringing a full-blown suit, but even if I'm bringing just like collared button downs, it's really tough. I mean, I could ball this up into a real small package. I've done it before, but uh, typically if I'm, if I'm going for a period of time and I'm wearing or I need to bring like nicer clothes, I'll usually just bring a, 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 a full-size suitcase so that things are, these things are at least somewhat presentable, you know, when I get there, as opposed to having to ball them up. But give you an idea what this looked like. I mean, it's kind of standard, right? Hygiene stuff, uniform. I got my training stuff here. So this is just like a small little kind of messenger bag that's super convenient for a lot of different things. I mean, even if you're just cruising around, you know, in an urban environment and you just need to be able to carry some stuff it's convenient it's small i mean you see the size of my hand it's little you know i use this mostly as kind of my travel gym bag setup so headphones some bands some prosthetic stuff's in here and you know that's pretty much it so it's just kind of my travel training package uh clothing yep yeah, boring i do want to show you guys this knife Okay, important tool. I want to show you guys this. So just, you know, nutrition on the go can be really hot. 
It can be really hard, if you, especially if you're unprepared. These two companies, these two products, I have no affiliation with either of them at all. Uh, these are just two companies that I've been using for quite a bit of time here. The Epic Series and then the RX Bars. There's a lot of real clean options out there for nutrition on the go. But these two are certainly on the list. I mean, if you look at what's inside this right here, there's really not much. And when you've got an ingredients list that's this short, chances are you're, you're trending in a good direction as opposed to when you have your ingredients list and there's 8,000 words and you can't pronounce half of them because it's all a bunch of bullshit. Um, then you're, you're trending in a horrible direction. So same as this one. You know, so real natural, real clean, just solid options. I order these in bulk um, where I get them by the case just so I have them, you know, ready to go. And, you know, they got the Epic Series. They got uh, beef, venison, or venice, venison, excuse me. Um, they have chicken ones as well, so like actual meat. And then these guys. So I order these just in bulk so I have them ready to go for travel. And then here's kind of my normal supplementation, at least for my pills anyway, the setup that I bring. It's just a little small carrier. Um, it's just got the bare essentials that I that I use daily, creatine, um, my my uh, my fish oils, my my zinc, my vitamin D, uh, all my stuff. So, boom, easy enough to travel with. And then just, you know, close. Oh, and then lastly, again, because of this trip being as long as it is and as much movement as I'll be doing, I brought an extra leg. So this suitcase right here is kind of the perfect size to fit this guy in, in the event I need it. Um, and then I got my go bag here that's just got, you know, all my prosthetic tools and additional bullshit that I need for the trip. So... Here you go. Different loadout package for, you know, a different mission. And, you know, you get good at this over time. I travel quite a bit, more, even more and more now. So you develop these processes just by going through the reps and learning through pain like anything else. Where you're like, oh shit, I really wish I had this thing. Or man, this would be really convenient to have. And then you just kind of develop your different kits and your different loadout plans that you know you use depending on the operational environment, depending on the other variables of wherever it is you're going, whatever it is you're doing. So that's what this looks like here. Uh, I'm gonna chill for a minute. I got a meeting with my team, my team machine team here to talk some stuff. And then actually the fitness center in this gym or in this hotel, it's actually decent. They got some cables. They got dumbbells up to, I think it's like 50 pounds. They got some med balls, a couple benches in there. I just gave it a quick glance before I came up to the room. So I'll probably do my workout there tonight. Get a little get a little training in. I think I'm just going to do some arms, which is kind of in line with what today's workout is scheduled to be. And then uh, and I'll be training on, on Fort Bragg for the rest of the time that I'm in this AO. Keep you guys posted. All right. All right, hotel gym training session complete. How's it going? I mean, this place, I mean, it's a decent setup for a hotel. You got this cable set up here. You got some treadmills. You got these two complete and total waste of space. You got uh, some benches, some dumbbells back there. It goes up to about 55. So more than enough equipment to get work done, to make progress. Not just in here wasting time, but legitimate progress. Did I hit any new max effort PR in here? No, I didn't. But did I push some weight for more reps with greater volume than I did the last time I did that exercise? 100% yes. So progressive overload at this point is considered a fact but it is not solely based on the amount of weight on the bar or the amount of, the, the amount of weight that you're moving. All right? Progress is made in places like this 
And progress can be made with places with less shit than this. In fact, nothing. Now, you don't need certain equipment, you don't need certain equipment just to make some sort of progress. The only thing you need to make progress is the desire to make progress and the willingness to put in the fucking work. So now I'm all kinds of fired up right now. We're gonna go refuel and then get back to work in the room. We'll see you later. Back in the hotel room. I've been over on Fort Bragg all day. Left this morning. Had what was, uh, ended up being around a three hour engagement uh, over at SWIC. So SWIC is the, SWIC is an acronym which stands for Special Warfare Senate in School. That's the unit that has selection, the Q course, all falls underneath SWIC. They're the ones that brought me out here to do a leadership professional development engagement with the medical side or aspect of that command. So a lot of them were 18 Deltas or future 18 Deltas that are going through the Q course to become 18 Deltas, which are the Special Forces medics. And then there were also some other students going through that, uh, that training because a lot of the other Special Ops medics also filter through uh, the SWIC medical section as well. So a diverse group. Went really well. You know, anytime I get a chance to engage, interact with the younger demographic, it's always something I take real seriously. I mean, for one, they are our future. So, you know, that's like kind of important. And then selfishly, I always get immense value out of doing that as well. Uh, you know, I get a chance to hang out with, you know, young, motivated people uh, of this age and pursuing these goals. It restores my faith in humanity, you know, which... I need that from time to time. You know, I'm not immune to looking around and seeing trends and that can become emotional uh, and concerning at times. You know, so when I get a chance to spend, you know, a few hours with, I don't know, it's probably 45, maybe 55 of these young animals that are pursuing what they're pursuing, I'm reminded that uh, as long as we continue to create people like that, we're going to be just fine. So great engagement overall. Got a chance to interact with some with some old friends that are here working that I haven't seen in a while. This has actually been the longest stint of time since I've been at Bragg. You know, we tend to circle through Fort Bragg quite a bit when you're in SF. This is kind of the flagpole and a lot of our different command elements are here. I haven't been on Fort Bragg in... Just over three years, I think. It's been a while, and things change fast. So kind of just cruising around, going down memory lane a little bit uh, was cool. So I got a chance to see some friends and colleagues that are still working over here now. And now I'm back in the hotel room, and I got just a mountain of work to do. So I'm sitting at the desk here in the room. My laptop is in front of me right here. And... uh I just wanted to share this quickly. You know, you come back from, you know, a full day, right? So it's like, what is it, 16, 20? So I left at, I don't know, 8 a.m. this morning, woke up, did my morning workout, left around 08, and I'm just getting back now. Um, you know, after I was done with the engagement, I went to the uh, one of the gyms on Fort Bragg, and I worked out over there as well. So, um it's a full day, right? You get back, especially in a hotel room. And here's my point. Hotel rooms, they enable sedentary behavior, we'll say. Like this environment, you walk into a hotel room, like what's the first thing you want to do? You want to throw your shit down. You want to lay in the bed. It's like perfectly made bed. It's clean, hopefully, as long as you're not staying in some shithole. TV's right there. Boom, Right? Hit the, hit the phone, hit the room service number, someone brings you up food. Like it enables just a sedentary behavior, even if it's only in that window of time. That can be tough. It's enticing. Like, like I have a bed like right next to me. It's like, oh, that looks comfortable. And I'm sure it is. I have a TV right next to me, right here. You know, there's probably something entertaining that's on right now that I could put on. <clears throat> 
those of us that travel frequently, you know, the more frequent you travel, the more significant this becomes. If you only travel for vacation, then have at it. Do it, you know, do whatever you want. Just know that, you know, those days off, it comes at a cost. Now, there's an upside, of course, to rex, relax, rest, relaxation, recalibration. That's an important part of the process. But just because you're in a hotel room doesn't mean that everything has to stop. In fact, most of the time, things really need to keep moving forward. You need to be able to put in work. Where that becomes challenging is really multi-layered. Nutrition, certainly challenging, right? If you don't have your own kitchen, your own food, it becomes a challenge. A lot of different ways to attack that, which I'll talk about in more depth later. Physical training, certainly challenging, right? If you train at a gym, well, you're not home. Like, your gym's not there. So, like, what do you have around you? Are you looking at that when you're booking your room? Are you looking to see what the hotel fitness center looks like? Some are decent. This one's not bad. Some are dog shit, right? Like, some hotel's fitness center is an elliptical in a closet. Like, okay, what what are we doing? What am I going to do with this thing? Like, pick it up? Maybe. You get more benefit out of doing that than going on it and riding this thing like you're at a fucking carnival. So physical training can be challenging as well. Um, and then just when you when you have more office type work to do, computer work. To do that in your room, you know, it's enticing to just like go chill because you, you have this like chill area that you're in. So those of us that travel somewhat frequently, really anybody, but especially those of us that travel frequently, it is essential that we establish systems and processes and habits specifically built in for when we travel. Specifically built in for when we travel so that everything doesn't just stop or just stagnate or start to regress just because we're on the road. And for me, traveling for work, meaning traveling from the work I do in uniform is something I've always been doing for a really long time. That's different than traveling for my passion project. And this trip is kind of, is really a combination of both. You know, I, I did some work on Fort Bragg yesterday and today. And then on Saturday, I'll be up at UNC Chapel Hill to do a speaking engagement with their hockey team. So, it, again, I said this is a multi-state trip. It's a week long, seven days. Like, things can't just stop. I can't just eat whatever I want for seven days. I can't just... I can't just do minimal physical training. Like hotel workouts alone really isn't going to be enough. It's not going to be enough in terms of my strength and my endurance capacity and all the things that I train for. It's great for range of motion, get some blood flow, some flexibility, calisthenics. That's a part of what I do. But I can't just completely and totally turn off my training program just because I'm on the road. And I also can't let my brand and business and passion project stuff, just stop. It doesn't work. Okay. So just being real deliberate about when we travel uh, and annotating, being honest about annotating when we are falling victim to the comforts that typically come with hotels and with traveling in that sort of fashion. Uh, Just being real deliberate about it. I bring that up because, you know, I just got in from a long day, you know, speaking engagements and those kind of interactions, they're t- it's tiring. It's taxing, right? It's taxing. So I get done with a three hour engagement that really turns more into like four because there's the after conversations that happen and photos and, and all that stuff is great. And it's part of my job to do that, but it's still tiring, you know? So then I go work out and then I make my, my way back to the hotel, you know, I've been gone you know, I don't know, six hours, seven hours. It's been, it's been, it's been a good, a good day. And I would love to just flop on the bed, throw on HBO and just kind of zone out. That becomes a real slippery slope pretty fast, right? An object in motion tends to stay in motion. So I just have to be real deliberate. And the reason why I'm sharing this is because I just, I just experienced this now where I come in, you know, leg off, 
get on the floor, just kind of loosen up a little bit, do a little bit of a cool down session from the workout I did at the gym, and then immediately get up, get the computer set up, and sit down and focus and work. Because that comfortable bed right there, that pillow that's right next to me, is a trap. And what may begin as, I'm just going to chill for 10 minutes, that turns into two hours, like that, right? So just knowing that just because we're on the road is not an excuse for everything to stop. We have to take ownership to find ways to continue to make progress, continue to do the work that is necessary for us to continue to move forward. That's the tip. And now I'm going to go to work. Talk to you guys later.